You are listening to the Level Up Gaming Podcast, episode 184, Making Shorter Stories. In today's episode, we discuss making shorter stories. We discuss how to make effective short stories. We also discuss why shorter stories can be more effective than a longer narrative. We continue our cross-promotion that we have with various podcasts. Stay tuned for more from Geeks Can't later in the episode. As you may have read on Facebook, my wife and I, we had our second child. So this podcast will be on a bi-weekly release schedule. If you want to get updates for the podcast, please join us on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Level Up Gaming Podcast. Uh, you can get more information there uh, in case we don't drop an episode next uh, next time uh, or if it happens like three weeks from now. Anyways, enjoy the episode. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level of Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me, I've got Josh. Josh, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm enjoying the weather. I'm I'm getting out. Um, I was worried that you know we talked last time I wasn't going to be able to get out again. But like, I am covered in bug bites now. You're covered in bug. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going for these these big long walks like I was talking about last time, and uh, I think I'm just I'm going too long. Going too long? Well, you know what? Maybe you should shorten up those walks. Well, maybe you shouldn't shorten up your walks, but. Uh, certainly shortening up your adventures can be a good thing. Yeah. You know what? That's a great idea. Shorter adventures. Yeah. Yeah. So you sent me a YouTube video from Matt Koval about making shorter adventures. You want to tell us what that was all about? Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, Matt Koval, uh, some of you guys might know him. He's uh, a writer for game development. He's written a couple of board games. Um, he has a YouTube channel that talks about making different adventures. And one of the things he was talking about recently was the problems that people run into with writing these giant epic campaigns. And, you know, a lot of the classic d d was something called modules and modules are these short little adventures they don't even need to be all that short but they were sort of like encapsulated adventures that you could run and uh you could string a bunch of them together to make something bigger or you could have a campaign made that way and doing these little ones is something that maybe we should be heading back towards now I didn't send you. Uh, I know Bob World Builder, Bob the World Builder, also did a video on the same subject, and I, you know, I follow him as well. I think Ginny D did one as well. Do you know Ginny D? I know Ginny D. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's been some talk about it a little while ago, but I was really liking it, and I was thinking about it, and I wanted to discuss it with you. Making shorter adventures. Yeah. No. I when I. Hurt when I read this, I was like, I was like "Well, you know, this is what, it's what I've been doing for for a while now, which is, you know, just a more episodic style storytelling. You know, things always giving whatever you're doing an end. We do this in our let's make a one shot. We always give it an end, but mm-hmm. we give it a continuation point. Um, you know, that's sort of what you're going to end up doing with anything that you make into a shorter game." You can string them together better if they always have some sort of uh, continuing hook at the end of it that lets players go, I really like that. I enjoyed that. I want to do more of that. Or I want to do yeah. another thing of that. And then you just create another small adventure. I, I think it's better. It's more compacted. There's a lot more um, you know, sense of reward and accomplishment uh, by completing a smaller adventure. It's also a lot less daunting to generate a smaller adventure, anything that's more compact and, uh, you know, kind of defined is, is much, much easier to, uh, get your players to a resolution point within the adventure and get them to kind of pick up on the, uh, the larger P 
pieces within the adventure as well. Yeah. I mean, I've caught myself, I mean, not caught myself. I've, I've like deeply embedded in me making giant long campaigns. Right. Everybody who's anybody who oh. ever played the the hobby, you've had you've played with a DM. You've played that's I don't know if your first game, mm-hmm. I don't know if your second game. You played under a DM and they told a grand epic and you want to you always want to replicate that. You as a GM, that's yeah. the that's the curse of being the player behind the GM is that you'll see that and you go, "I could never do that." And it's like, "Well, yeah, but he they they don't always hit those as well. <laughs> uh-huh. It's it's the um for every Lord of the Rings, there's a uh, uh, uh what's the um like uh, one of those young adult novels that like the first movie was great and then the second movie is direct to video and the third movie they make a, a short TV series on sci-fi that gets canceled halfway through. That is the problem with making a grand adventure that isn't as grand as you might think yes grand adventures have a lot of ups and downs if you try and make it the whole thing from the beginning a massive grand adventure that's that is a huge task that is a lot of work you know it's not a lot of work making one good section yes Yes, it's like it's like if I asked you with no experience to go build me a house, okay, and you go, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, well, can you paint a room and decorate it? Yeah, I like, can you do those I, those things? Like, yeah. it's a lot more manageable if I told you just to go do that piece instead of go, you know, renovate a house or go do. Something. <laughs> Yeah, like, that's why, you know, with video games, uh, they usually have you on sh- small tasks at the beginning because you learn the project and then you build up to a bigger thing. I was yeah. joking with you about uh, about development before, you know, doing Agile instead of Waterfall <laughs> yeah, okay. for, for the devs out here. <laughs> Don't get me started. Um, <laughs> the... The, the 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 again you have to remember is that grand the grand adventure although i guess it's kind of got like the sort of like sexy appeal to it uh mm-hmm. is is just a lot it's just, you're just more likely to fail with it i can't tell you the number J- jared when we were doing the grand adventures jared would make games that would last anywhere between one session to four sessions before he was just like I don't feel this make new characters. We're going to do something else. Okay. And that's probably the majority of what happens. And it's a lot of like a numbers game, just, just doing it enough time. So you finally get a, a, a concept that hits that works for the grand adventure. It's much, much easier to build into a grand adventure from a bunch of small adventures. Okay. Even if they're disjointed, once you kind of have a, a feel for how you're playing and how the characters are playing within your small adventures, it's a lot easier to look back at them and go, all right, has there been any through lines? Okay, if there haven't been any through lines, do I want to start adding a through line? Like, you know, there's there's, there's things you can do that, that can turn a bunch of small adventures into a large adventure. Um, and I, I'm, I'm totally on team small adventure these days. I think small, <laughs> small adventures are the way to go. I think it's just... It's just much, much easier to, to get through things. It's much more manageable for any GM. And, uh, you know, if people don't show up, it, it's a lot less disappointing. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I think, so the small adventures are great. You know, they don't take as long to create. They There's less story for the players to remember or to keep track of. Um, And if the players aren't feeling it, you can move on quicker. These are all great things about short adventures. But as the GM, as the guy making the story, if you are making your own short adventure and you are one of those people that's always out there trying to make these grand epics, you have to break it up. You have to look at it as a series of parts. Now, I've mentioned this before in the way that I write uh, I usually write, you know, a grand arc 
made up of smaller, what I call episodes, because I think of it like a season of TV. You know, you've got an episode that is semi-contained that leads into a large arc, but they can all like build on each other. But a single episode itself of your game can be one of these short adventures. Just easier to build, easier to work with. And it can still lead to those epics if you want that, if you're willing to put that in, but you don't have to do that every week. You don't have to do that like every game session. You can take a couple weeks off. You can try a new thing. You can do a different thing. You can have, um, you know, filler episodes, love filler episodes, the beach episode or, you know, something like Halloween. You could do a Halloween heist from Brooklyn Nine-Nine right in the middle of your D&D campaign. Sounds fun. Yeah. No, again, you get you have options to to pivot, to change things in smaller adventures. Um, again, it's interesting to hear you talk about your total methodology in terms of kind of building a game out, even though it's episode, like the episodes are these small adventures and you can always add more into it, but you're building over a grand arc and through line, which I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of that design decision, which is, I know how the whole overarching plan is supposed to happen. And uh, will my players hook onto it and work through it throughout these games? I don't know, but you know, you, you at least could throw out that breadcrumb there, but at least with the, the episodes within it, if the episodes end appropriately and your players say, I don't like this game, like, or I don't like what I'm, I, I don't like what we're doing or, you know, whatever. Um, it's much, much easier to change the direction of where you go next time <laughs> that if you're yeah. like that if you're like but we're 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 at the part where you're adventuring through the the middle lands where you need to work your way to the to the grand empress to to, to discover the true nature of the necromancers you know assault 300 years ago well I, we're done like it, it, that yeah. that that's that's the most sour taste that you can have as a gm and as a player I've got a a note on my my notes because I always keep notes Uh, (laughs) but as this is for short adventures it's only half a page Um, that you know I was like how long should a short adventure be and it was that a one shot is usually completed in like four to five hours right a small adventure would be about four to five sessions and then one of those giant proper epic campaigns lasts until your players stop showing up uh, I still think a campaign has an end to it, but I mean, like an endless campaign, sure, maybe, but like I think there's a there's an oh, end to a campaign. You you make those giant campaigns unless you if unless you know what you're doing, you you might run into a situation where players are like oh, I'm not feeling it. Again, so, yeah. So yeah, if it, if you don't ever end your campaign, you have no intention of ending your campaign, then uh, we don't know how to end your. Campaign. You don't know how to end your campaign because you've built so many crazy things into it. Then you end up in a situation where, uh, you know, people will eventually stop showing up. Lives change. People get busy. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, all sorts of stuff happens. It's it's much harder. You you eventually want to uh, to end any campaign, even if it's not a, just a short adventure. It's a long adventure. You eventually want to end it. Have some closure point so that way you could continue on and be like, at least we finished something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's much easier if your giant campaign is made up of these short little things because you can find endpoints along the way. Uh, I did the the cyberpunk campaign that I just finished recently, a couple weeks ago, a month ago. Oh my God, it's been a while. Um, and it was, I had come up with a large story. It lasted several months. Uh but it was made up of these sections, different things that they had to do, different parts of the adventure, uh, different stopping points that lead into the next section. It was all designed around this sort of modular nature so that depending on how they move through it, I could make changes and update things. And then uh, before that I had run um, 
the desert campaign for my other friends where it was literally just a bunch of episodes. They were guards in a desert city that were sent out and stumbled upon adventures. And it was different adventures all the time. And they led into this larger story. They got out to a point where they felt the campaign was over because they defeated one of the big bad guys. I had written, you know, a whole bunch of extra beyond that. But they were happy with where this story ended. So I am too. We take a break now to hear a word from Geeks Camp. Hello, Zach here from Geeks Camp, and I'm here to warn you strongly about our podcast. We've got three hosts forming some sort of a Bermuda triad where many unfortunate souls enter and precious, precious few merge again unscathed. One of our siren hosts speaks incessantly about dungeons and dragons and God knows what other malefants. The other, a sea hag of a man that delves the depths of Kickstarter and brings back both luminous pearls and moist clams. Finally, the third and most despicable will spew tales of distant lands like tabletop conventions and other occurrences. Together we weave a tangled net of RPGs, reviews, and interviews that are sure to leave you breathless, drowning. Now let me ask you a question. Has this tantalized you? If so, you can catch the Geeks Can't live on the World of Game Design Twitch and YouTube each week. Just search for World of Game Design on Twitch or YouTube, or search for Geeks Can't, that's G-E-E-K-S-C-A-N-T, in your favorite podcast feed, and you'll be able to download the audio there. Enjoy. We now return to the conversation on the Little Gaming Podcast. Yeah, again, I, I I think that's a another good point that you you kind of bring up there, which is um, if you tell a story episodic with a through line on it, uh, you may end up coming coming up short where your players stop early in the campaign and they're they're just done for whatever reason. Um, you know, it is a lot easier to write something that's disjointed. Also, if you're confined to a like a story through line and you don't know how to connect that the dots to that yet maybe like it's just a a general idea but you want to just game and you want to tell some stories um this gives you this buys you more time to be able to come up with what that is supposed to be at the end (laughs) Uh, (laughs) because and you don't not all your stories have to relate to it which is really nice. Like the small adventure can just be a bunch of, you know, small things that are disjointed. Like you said in that, that each thing was just an episode and you figured out somewhere along the way, how to make it all connect to the larger story. So if your players get to the larger story, then it all kind of, kind of works out. Yeah. Um, I think another fun part about the small adventures, short stories like this is that um, if you've got, If you've got a gaming group that has more than one leader, as in, it's not just you jamming all the time, short stories, short adventures can lead to round robining a larger situation. Like you can keep a set of characters and just round robin who's DMing that week that or that for that adventure you know and just trade out like my character is off doing something this week that's why i'm jamming and maybe you know one of the other guys characters is off doing something the next week and that's why he's running the story no i I think that yeah that can be a lot of fun too yes being able to change the gm uh a lot within your group uh, that that's really where the, the small adventures shine is that you give a lot of people opportunities to be GMs in the group. And it's um, again, it's, it's a less, it's a less daunting task for your players to want a GM in a group where everything is small, short, 
compacted, you know, three to eight session type games, you know, something like that, that they're, it, it's, it's, it's much easier for you to say, uh, you know, Hey, Bob, I want you to, to run. Would you like to run the next game? Or like, I've got an idea for a game. You know, I don't know how much, how much legs it has, you know, but even if your player only has three sessions worth of a game or two sessions worth of a game, that's better to be able to let them hop in at some point during your, uh, your, your, your story or be able to, to hop in and be the GM than to not, you know, be the GM. It's, it's, it's sharing the duties and it's giving players opportunities to, to step up to that GM table and attempt to be a GM or, or practice being a GM with the, the group. You get to be a player, which I know all GMs secretly really want to be players. <laughs> I mean, you didn't get into this because you, you like buying books and sharing them with your friends. But yeah, you know. I, I think also uh, that short adventures are going to be easier for people that haven't, you know, been the game master before, even more so than one shots. It, with a one shot, you're constrained by time. You're trying to pack everything in. You got a lot going on. You got to really sell it, move into it quickly. Um, with Epic Adventures, you know, you have to make the long sell. You have to build. You have to have, you know, an ongoing uh, push to keep your players moving forward. With a short adventure, you've got a hook. You can take a little bit of time getting into it and then you can sort of breathe in the space and then it's over and you don't have to keep going forever. I think that's a really great place for people that haven't, you know, experienced the joys of running a game can, you know, take their first steps in without having too much trouble with it. Now, there is that whole like, oh, how am I supposed to write my own short adventure? There's a bunch of them out there. There's a ton of them out there. Like I said before, a lot of the old games, you know, those old D&D campaigns were just that. They were these short little modules. There were a couple of pages, maybe, you know, 15, 20 pages of a game. And uh, you could go down to the comic book shop and pick them up. You could, you know, pick them up for the gaming shop. They have... Um, like Dungeons and Dragons, the Wizards of the Coast people have put together a couple of different anthologies. If you haven't done one of these short campaigns, uh, Tales of the Awning Portal, it's a good one. Uh, that's just, you know, adventures. Uh, Candlekeep Mysteries is a bunch of, you know, mystery adventures. Uh, Keys in the Golden Vault are all about, uh, thievery or uh, treasure hunting and stuff like that. Uh, there's a new one coming out, um, Tales from the Endless Staircase or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I really should take a look at it and see what, it's, what it has. But they are all these, like, you know, 15, 20 page adventures. And you can buy a book with like eight of them in it if you, if you need to, you know, get that sort of thing. But honestly, you could also just watch a movie. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you the nice thing about a small adventure is you can base it off of anything. Uh, you know, Jared always likes, always sees a movie and then he gets inspired by something um, to do something. If you're in a long campaign, uh, the only way that you can really break out of that is to say, okay, we're pausing tonight because I want to do, like, uh, this little like one shot experiment thing. Maybe you want to try, you read about a new system. You want to try a new system out. It's really hard to do if you're doing it through a long campaign because you're locked into a system when you're in kind of mini campaigns and stuff. It's much easier to say like, okay, I'm going to run a two, three session game and uh, we're going to play around with this, this new system and try out some, something different mm -hmm. for, for the, uh, the, the games itself. Um, you know, and like you said, there, there's a lot of sources that you can pull from to get inspiration for this. You can base it off of, a, you know, any movie, basically. 
you can pilfer pilfer all the ideas okay this is we talked about basically plagiarizing movies a couple episodes ago i don't remember love them like uh, it's been a while but like one of my favorite games to play when trying to come up with a a new story for a game is pick two movies at random and try and make a story out of how they work together it's fun and those sort of things can be a real nice quick adventure now obviously like like lord of the rings as a movie is a giant grand adventure but if we're talking short adventure you know the first part of the first movie that that trip from hobbiton to the last homely house that's a short adventure that's a longer short adventure but it's a short adventure the mines of moria that's one short adventure you know and you can have if you look at it that way it is made up of those as well if you want to look at like um just you know you you pick a standard action movie or a mystery movie or like uh, a road trip or you know buddy cops stuff like that all of those have the same sort of style and function as a short adventure a hook uh, a building danger a twist uh, and then you know the falling action to a, a good resolution and it doesn't need to be a lot of places it doesn't need to have a lot of people it can just be um fairly straightforward couple of weeks a couple of sessions um a couple of different locations a couple of different types of encounters and i think that's really what makes a small adventure great is you can play with it you can have a lot of fun with it without having to worry about you know well how does this fit in the overarching narrative where, where am I going with this? How do I keep the players engaged for the next, you know, couple of years or whatever you're planning? Just have fun with it. Yes. Again, it's about it's about having fun. It's about giving yourself more opportunities to try different things as well. Again, I I love myself pizza. Okay, I would probably dislike pizza a little bit more if I had to eat it every single meal of every single day. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I would ever not like it, but I would definitely get bored of it. So small adventures uh, are definitely the way to go to stop you know, you know the monotony of going through the same thing over and over again. And like you said um, it's, it's an interesting point which is that you know in Lord of the Rings, each part of that is effectively a chapter within a larger story. So are they all small adventures that build into a larger story? Well, maybe that's kind of the key is that your small adventures create the larger campaign. Stop trying to view the process of building a large campaign as this massive thing that you have to do. And there's like a track and a solution to get there. You know, it's, it's, it can be done. You can you can achieve building one in a, in many different ways. And I think smaller adventures can help you accomplish that task better than just sitting down and saying, "I'm going to plan out the next year's worth of sessions, and we're going to get to the end of my my campaign." Yeah, because you, you go if you go too big and something happens, it's going to hurt. But if you start, you know, with small chunks, it gives you more flexibility. You can still come up with an epic storyline, an epic through line, like this overarching narrative, and just work towards it with shorter stories. Yeah. Have fun. That's what we're here for. We're not here to, like, you know, change the the, the universe. We're here to have a good time. This is a hobby that is about having fun with your friends and if it's your job then i envy you because you're probably doing something you really love so <laughs> yeah. good for you good for you um you have anything else you want to add to this josh um man i'm i'm just like you know i gotta work more on making standalone short stories like i i still when i make 
these short games, they're always part of a bigger narrative. I think there, there's a lot. It, 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 it's very fun to connect a bunch of short stories that way. Mm. Is is the thing? It's it makes you look. It may, it makes you look to your players like you really had it all thought out at the end of it. Okay, it it when it when it clicks, it's it's very masterful. When it doesn't click, or when it slows down, or if it if you're stuck, if it gets boring for somebody, then you know like there, there's pitfalls in everything that you do. But like when it clicks, it looks really really good. And again, I'm not saying don't do it because I'm doing that within our game as well. But I also incorporate stories that have nothing to do with the through line that I'm doing. Yeah. Well, because, I mean, honestly, if we think about it, in any world, your characters are not the center of it. They may be involved in what's going on is the big thing, but there could be other stories going on as well. Yes, your your characters are in the world. Yes, you are at the center of, in in your world that you're playing for your characters. Eh, they kind of are the center. Of it. Yes, <laughs> but like it, you can have a little bit of fun with uh, side stories or other things that are going on, and it doesn't have to be always about the oh, epic. It doesn't have to be about the epic adventure. It can be like you know. Again, we've talked about. Potion commotion. We've talked about uh, Carnival of Mirrors. We've done a lot of other little let's make a one shots. I think that yeah. that's that's evidenced in those, which is like, like wow, a lot of s- some weird things are happening, and there's nothing. Th- these aren't like overarching bad things. Like if you left the situation, it would suck for the people that you left, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it would be the end of the world. <laughs> I mean depends on your story i mean lord of the rings it could be the end of the world um, <laughs> yeah but no it, it's about having a good time and i think you know sometimes they gets lost in people wanting to be just this you know epic storyteller it, remember you know song of ice and fire he ain't done yet they finished the tv show i mean we're not going to talk about how it ended but like that is an epic story that kind of got away from people and you write smaller bits you write smaller stories that fit into a larger epic you know like I I would say Brandon Sanderson but his books are still massive he just writes a ton of them Um, but that's I think that's where I was going with that you know like don't put yourself in a position where your story is more important than the fun you have actually playing it. Well said. Well said. Gonna leave it at that. So uh, it's gonna wrap us up for the week. If you have thoughts on smaller stories versus a grand epic, maybe you've got the right formulas for a grand epic, let us know. Level Up Your Gaming Podcast at gmail.com or facebook.com slash level up your gaming. Also, the podcast is on YouTube, so subscribe, like it there. Otherwise, subscribe to your favorite podcasting site, review it, recommend it to a friend, all those good things, and that will wrap us up for the week. So for Josh, I'm Aaron. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.